Greetings to all. A warm welcome to all of you. Today I'm going to start a new broadcasting and it will be a special It's a special um, spiritual meditation for women. Um, it's a prayer with women of the Bible. We're going to go, let me say, almost every day with a new woman of the Bible and going through what their life was and so projecting that on our own and so much more this is your pastor Yeti I pray God's word blesses you this day and plants a seed in your spirit to seek the truth to have a deep relationship with him and a stronger prayer life may all women who are clicking on my broadcasting hear this blessing it's special for you and of course all others as brothers and friends are welcome to listen to this broadcast Woman, you are loved. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 19 reads, For this reason, grasping the greatness of this plan by which Jews and Gentiles are joined together in Christ, I bow my knees in reverences before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, God the first and ultimate Father. May he grant you out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened and spiritually energized with power through his Spirit in your inner self, indwelling your innermost being and personality, so that Christ may dwell in your heart's through your faith and may you having been deeply rooted and securely grounded in love be fully capable of comprehending with all the saints God's people the width and length and height and depth of his love fully experiencing that amazing and endless love and that you may come to know particularly and practically through personal experience. The love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled up throughout your being to all the fullness of God, so that you may have the richest experience of God's presence in your life, completely filled and flooded with God himself. This is a beautiful verse 
pertaining to God's love in the hearts of his people. Paul exhorts believers to know how much God loves them, to comprehend the wide length and height of his love, to know through personal experience the love of Christ, and that we may be filled up throughout our entire being with the fullness of God, so we can experience His presence in our lives, completely flooded and filled. And these verses are pictured in an imaginative mind. Meditating and artistically visualized Christ's love engulfing and shattering our whole being. Are you able to do it? Are you willing to take the time to now to know him as a believer? You are capable, capable and should be drawn to his powerful presence. As we dwell into the women God used to reveal himself and his purpose, I pray you take the time to read and listen the chapter of the day. My heart's desire is you draw closer to God and allow Him to open your heart to a deeper understanding of His love. In a society where the word love is tossed around, blowing in a shifting wind, God's love is stable, firm, trusting, comforting, encouraging, and powerful. God's love changes us from the inside out with the Holy Spirit and His Word. My prayer for you is, and this I pray that your love may abound more and more, displaying itself in greater depth, in real knowledge and in practical insight, so that you may learn to recognize and treasure what is excellent, identifying the best, and distinguishing moral differences, and that you may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ actually living lives that lead other away others away from sin filled with the fruit of righteousness which comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God so that his glory may be both revealed and recognized The next 30 days, and it doesn't mean that there will be every day one, but it counts 30 days. We are going together in this process. The One A Day series is a collection of women and their testimonies from the Word of God. These 30 women are amazing matriarchs, God-led, and... I love to share this triumphs, struggles, and trials. My prayer for any woman who reads or listen this series is to know God and have a personal relationship. A personal relationship with Him. I pray these women draw you closer and open your heart for a deeper connection and fill your life with a newfound purpose. In these 30 days, you will be encouraged by the intentional woman, the witnessing woman, and the Hosea 2nd 14 woman who was in a season of testing. Mary, the mother of Jesus, Sarah, and Pilate's wife were married women who trusted God, regardless of what those around them professed. The healed woman, Apia, and the pregnant woman all expressed the comfort of Christ and his love for his daughters. I know these women will bless you as you discover God's deep love for his children. I encourage women to listen just one chapter a day. Think about the testimony scribed. 
and memorize the scriptures in the prayer at the end of every chapter. And what to expect? The next 30 days should be one of prayer, reflection, and focus. Use these prayers to pray over your life, your families, spiritual growth, your marriage, your children, and your purpose, your friends, your brothers and sisters. Take time to be alone. Read the scriptures out loud and write them on I'll give you just an example on note cards or just use a notebook. Read and commit to memory what is the Lord showing you. How can you go deeper in prayer? Are there any obstacles in your life? Is he revealing past challenges, hard ages and healing? Do not be afraid but write down your thoughts and pray over them. I pray God's word blesses you this day and plants a seed in your spirit to seek the truth, to have a deep relationship with him and a stronger prayer life. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shining upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turns his face toward you and give you peace. Our first woman is Bila. The desire for love can be overwhelming. Our heart longing for someone to know us, to understanding us and care for us can cloud a healthy outlook on love. When these aspects of love are not met, we may look for affection in all the wrong places. As women, our idea of love may not be God's perspective of love. God's love for us was demonstrated through His Son, Jesus Christ. Our finite minds will never comprehend God's love, but we can read His Word and gain a better understanding of what His love means. Love endures long and is patient and kind. Love never is envious, nor boils over with jealousy, is not boastful or vainglory, does not display itself haughtily, it is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride, it is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act uncomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own right or its own way. For it is not self-seeking, it is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it and pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love bears, love bears up under anything and everything that comes, is ever ready to believe the best of every person. <clears throat> its hopes are faithless under all circumstances, and it endures everything without awakening, without weakening. Love never fails never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. You can find the scriptures in 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 to, 5, to 8. His love for you is available anytime you want. Our rendition of looking for love in all the wrong places will always play a scratches recording. We will never find the love we search for in another human, in monetary treasure, 
in positions of authority or our own families. Jesus of Nazareth never once put his hope and trust in mankind. John chapter 2, the verses 24 and 25 states, But Jesus did not trust himself to them, because he knew all men, and he did not need anyone to bear witness concerning man, for he himself knew what was in human nature. He could read man's hearts. Bila is a woman in the Bible who may have walked without love. Her desire to be touched, understood, hugged, and gently looked at with longing from a man has clouded her heart. She is a married woman, so to speak, and has several children to a man whose heart is spoken for. Jacob is married to Rachel, or Rachel, Bilak's mistress. And when young Rachel is incapable of having children, Bilak is given to Jacob as a secondary wife. Bilak's life is spent in servitude. Her story reminds me of Agar, slave of Sarai, whom was also given to the patriarch for breeding purposes. I do want to remind women this was not God's plan for marriage. When our Lord created something beautiful in the garden between a man and a woman, human nature intervened and desired its own rules. Laws in Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia, excuse me, were dedicated by the code of Hammurabi. The code is a well-preserved Babylonian list of laws from ancient Mesopotamian dating back to about 1754 before Christ. Babylonian king Hammurabi enforced a code of 282 laws and standards, specified rules for commercial interactions, fines and punishments to meet the requirements of justice. The Nuzi tablets are also further evidence of the customs of the ancient world. Over 5,000 tablets written in Akkadian or Akkadian have been found in Nuzi, an ancient town situation above Assyria. Tablet number 67 describes a marriage arrangement in ancient Mesopotamia. If a woman failed to bear children, the husband may take a concubine and the wife may have authority over the offspring. As much as this situation leaves a distaste in our mouth, it was practiced and culturally accepted in the ancient world. Although customary, it leaves little doubt the effects of this tradition had on the concubines and the slave girls. Bilah was used. Sadly, Bilak's story does not end there. This sordid tale continued draws us closer to this dysfunctional family. Reuben, Jacob's son to Leah, has set his eyes on this unloved slave woman, either for his own pleasure, seducing her to gain authority over his father or truly loving her from afar as young men do. Bilak sleeps with Reuben, the sin of his son sleeping with his father's concubine has dramatic consequences for Reuben. A reminder, God sees all. He will lose this birthright. Now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for Reuben was the eldest, but because he defiled his father's bed with Bilach, his father's concubine, his birthright was given to Manasseh and Ephraim, the sons of Joseph, son of Israel, so that he is not enrolled in the genealogy according to the birthright. First Chronicles chapter 5, verse 1, and this is the Old Testament. The Bible does not delve into Bilak's personality. Her character is not described as hotly like Agar, the slave, or as Pena, Peninach the unloved wife of Eleazar, who vexed 
and pregnant Hannah, the wife who was loved. She is not described as Leah, the weak-eyed sister, wife of Rachel, who became pregnant for attention. Bila just seems to exist. If not for the Bible, we would never know this woman ever walked the earth. Women today feel Bilak's pain. Believe it or not, human nature has never changed. We still desire love, we still desire affection, and we still desire the attention our hearts seek. There are loveless marriages today, there are women used and abused, and there is only one place to seek healing for our hearts, in the arms of Jesus Christ. Has someone killed or darkened, or darkened your dreams? He can restore them. Has someone taken your innocence? Christ makes all things clean. Has someone physically tormented you? Take his yoke, for he is light. For his is light, easy and not hard and harsh, sharp and pressing. Our Lord Jesus Christ came to set the captive free, and so we might have life and live it to the fullest. As women, we come to Jesus desiring a love, a love brimming and boiling over, fervent and alive. He is the only one who will ever understand this love we seek. Women tend to carry their hearts in their hands. We may hold in we may hold into hurt, squeezing the memories until there is no joy left to squeeze. We may hold our hearts outwardly, continuously showing and wearing our pain, never allowing God to heal what is broken. We may pretend to hold nothing in our hands, hiding our own emotions and suppressing them deeper into the recess of our mind. When Christ offers his hand to the, take the broken heart we carry, you have a decision to make. You can hold onto it, or you can give him just most intimate, exposed wounds. You give him your cut and bruised heart. You hand over the gashes, the pain, the suffering, and the loneliness your heart is weighed down with. In prayer, you kneel down and give him your heart, the hand of Christ, and only the hand of Jesus can take something so delicate and tender as a broken heart from a woman. If you allow him, Jesus will hold onto your heart, begin to heal you from the inside, and restore you whole. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ that is grafted and joined to him by faith in him as Savior, he is a new creation, reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition, have passed away. Behold, new things have come, because spiritual awakening brings a new life. Woman, yes you, you are loved. You have a king who laid down his life for you, so you could live victoriously. I pray this has blessed your heart to come to Jesus as you seek holiness. Let us pray and lay our hearts at the cross. Adonai, when I look in the mirror, I see before me all my imperfections. I see rejection, abandonment, and disregard. I do not see love. Father, teach me to see myself with your eyes, not as the world sees, but to love my beautiful feeders you have created. Help me to remember that the world considered Jesus, 
who although being essentially one with God and in the form of God, did not think this equality with God was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained, but stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity. So as to assume the gods of a servant in that he became like man and was born a human being. And he had no form or comeliness that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. Please keep me from being envious, desiring or coveting with another sister of mine looks like money, intelligence, a husband, boyfriend, house, car, clothes, jewelry, job, friends or children. Help me not mimic, copy or pretend to have another's gift and talent. For you have given to each one their own unique gifts. Give me a hunger and a thirst for righteousness. I strive to be a woman after your own heart. My purpose to pursue the things of God and other things of this world. For now you are my husband. Father, teacher, comforter, protector, provider, and friend, the man of my dreams. If I am rejected, cast aside, tossed away, or disregard in any manner, any manner, I will recall Yeshua was also despised, rejected, and hated, but choose to love and forgive. I will choose your ways over mine and walk your path over my own, whether I stand alone with you or have others by my side. I know I am always loved, accepted, and cherished by you, my beautiful King. Thank you, Jesus, for forming us in the womb, adopting us into you, putting our names on your hand, collecting our tears in a bottle, knowing each hair on my head, and making a face for me in, a place for me in heaven. Your death on the cross was not in vain, for I am crucified with Christ, picking up my cross and carrying it daily. It is not me, but Christ who lives in me. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I pray. Amen. May you be blessed, my beautiful women. This is your pastor, Yari. Bye.